Hey sports fans, it's Bearwood here, back from holidays, back on the job, so I've got this door to do. It's uh, maybe a hundred years old almost, 1925, close to it. The house was built and this was the original door and it was transferred out here to the garage. Now, I came in and started fooling around with my <coughs> five-in-one one scraper, quickly realized that wasn't going to get it. I don't know about quickly, but I realized it. So, uh, I'm going to use the hot gun. Heat, hot air gun. Number two. Setting number two. We'll just warm this stuff up. Start to bubble a little bit. Then I'll just get my scraper out. I kind of like to work, work an area. You know, get it, get a whole area warming, gently warming up, and then you can progress on to it. So I can't do it with one hand, so I got to get the get the uh, other hand going. I'll get the um, tripod out in a little while if I'm making a good progress with it. Show you some of that. Okay, this is part two of this door. Now I've been working on it for about three hours now. I've sanded this all down, filled the gaps with. Um, two-part polyester filler resin same thing over here there yet got some bad places where the uh, caulking the window putties out so I'm going to paint that right now with some undercoat first and then I'll come back and put the filler the, the window putty in after that dries um, I had to take a little bit off the edge of the door here it was binding up at the top now it's not binding so a little bit of filler in a couple of places on the back around the joints and basically not too bad down here just a little bit of scraping and cleaning with the sugar soap so now I can get on with um, painting it and I don't have my little mini roller with me right now so I'm a little bit disappointed that I don't have the mini roller um, so I just want to go ahead and get these these things here painted up. I like a little bit of paint on the glass when I'm doing it, but this one don't need it on the glass here because it's not going to show. Just using one of my round flitches artist brushes, actually they're called, but it seems to do the trick. I've just got some in the paint tray there. So this is um, Dulux exterior undercoat I, I don't know if it's primer or not but it's going to be undercoat and primer in one it's the brush is just a little bit too soft um, for what I'm doing it's hard to concentrate with one hand and try and watch any pain on the other I'll just take a razor blade when I get done and clean all that off when I get, get to the point. I want to make sure it's on the glass and sealed. I'd rather have a little bit over than not enough. So, where is it? There it is. Just take your time, do all the rails and the styles, I think they call them. And then we'll come around and do, do the outside. So that's where we are so far. Okay, so we're um, putting this door back together now. It looks a bit sloppy at the moment, but I'm just working on the lock. And the client was telling me that he sometimes has to lift the door up to get it to lock. So the top part, striker, or whatever you call that, that, that's, that thing, that's, that's working good. But the lock is actually hitting. Where is it? Where is the key? Here we go. The lock, you can see the lines. Here's the line where it's going. So it's actually hitting someplace in there. So I'm going to lower this down. You've got about that much, a quarter of an inch. And then I don't want to go too low. This one. So I just want to go a little bit more, maybe half that distance. A good, good fat eighth, maybe three or four mil down. So I'll just take and mark that off, cut that out lower it down and we should be good to go. 
so just look and see where the lock's striking. See, that's nice right there. It's dead center on that one, but it's not right there. It's hitting on that bottom part, so it's got to go down. And then the other thing was it was sticking at the top, so I took my belt sander and took that off. You can see the got a nice no no sticky reveal there now. You see the air coming, light coming through there, but so now take that off, chisel it out a little bit, lower it down. That lock, and we should be good to go. Okay, this this door actually looked pretty good before I even started, but this was all rotten around in here. So I've don't have my fine multi-tool with me otherwise I'd just use that and cut this right off but I did have this um, Japanese I think it's a pull saw you cut it by pulling so I've taken the cut what I could with this and now I'm gonna take this this bit here this 12 mil come down here and just use that to out as far back as I want to go. And you can use whatever size works. Smaller size to be a easier to work with. And if I say I had my I had a multi tool, I'd just be doing that. But that's what you can use this thing. This is like a carpenter's eraser. Um, so that's what you do. Just do that. And then I'll treat it with some wood hardener and then get on with the rest of the painting because I don't want to get stuck doing that one little thing this morning. Uh, I need to get a piece of wood that's the right size and have a saw. So I'll just get to stop the rot right now and see what's... Um so that's, that's just going to need a good treatment. Of, I'm not going to dig that out of uh, wood hardener in there. Just scrape some of this stuff off around that hole so it gets a nice good soak and, and put the, the wood hardener in there. And then that'll be Bob. You know Bob, your uncle. Okay, bye. Okay, so it's Bearwood here with some garage door painting. This is the one we did earlier with the Dulux exterior gloss. It's not mine. This side hasn't been painted in ages, but it's turned out quite nice. So, I mean, it's just a garage door, remember. Now, do these windows, we're gonna clean those out. But what I'm working on at the moment is the dreaded garage door post. Now, these have actually been replaced a while back, and they're in good shape still. But what the problem was, one of the things was, um, right here, somebody did a really poor job of just like either spilling concrete or pouring concrete right around this post. So any water that would have been there would have been trapped right in there. So I've just taken my chisel and knocked some of this, this stuff out so the water can actually drain away. Same thing on the other side. Then I've just cleaned everything down, taken and sanded it lightly, um, and now we're ready for some HB42 Ultimate Wood Filler. Um, I just get a piece of cardboard. I'm get this open easy enough. I should put it on the, on the, put it on the tripod. Let's see what I, here. I can't, I can't be having this one-handed stuff when I don't need to. With my $21 tripod, 21 pounds even. Okay, I had to, I had the tool just a minute ago. There it is. One of my favorite tools is the small plasterer's tool or small trowel. So, I don't need much. Probably could have stirred that up a little bit. That's pretty good though. It's not, it's not separated very much. Now, what you want to do though is you definitely first time you use one of these is you want to give it a good, good squishy wishy. Okay, so they say a golf ball size lump of this stuff is a, and you use a P size of this stuff. So that's that's a P and that's nowhere near a golf ball size. So that's probably way, way too much, but we just, we don't trust it still after all these years. So what do I do next is I just come over here. It's mixed up pretty good. 
you don't have to spend all day at it and you haven't got all day to spend at it and you can tell the difference in the consistency once you've got the the activator in there the the hardener part once that's in it's the, it becomes a lot more creamier and smoother so I'll just rub that in there good and then take their little trowel and I can see that wants to be low already so I'm gonna leave it a little bit high purposefully high get that corner and then you don't have a lot of time to work with this stuff it goes off pretty quick So I've done some modifications to the uh, driveway here a little bit. This, um, I don't know whoever did it, but when they when they did this, they left a big pile of concrete right here. And so any water that come had nowhere to go except right on that post. So I've, I've just tight, made a little channel for the water to get away from it. Good idea. Same thing over there. Oh, I mean, it looked like they tried to do something, but they sort of spilled it yeah. right there. And it was just, you know, that's why you probably lost your first ones. Oh. 